Want to know how to never take full damage? Or how to make an inverted nether portal? Here are 255 illegal things you can do in Minecraft. Instead of just moving an AFK player to an obsidian box, how about putting them into a water-filled box with regenerating walls? All you have to do is place lava on the outside of the box, place a conduit to stop them from drowning, and an elder guardian will make sure it takes them literally forever to mine out. I know how to get out! Ah! Hoppers literally have a built-in way to prank people. If you hate building huge farms, wait for someone else to do it for you. And place your own hopper beneath the ones that catch all the items. It'll filter you half their items, so you get some free stuff and they won't even notice. 1.20 added this awesome new feature that lets note blocks make mob sounds if you add the right head on top. This means you can set up a random redstone clock below someone's face and drive them insane with mob noises that they'll never be able to track down. One of my favorite ways to set up one of these random Random clocks is to add a chicken underground somewhere in a small room with a pressure plate. The chicken will walk around slowly and activate whatever you want it to. I recommend a bell because oh my god, they're loud. If you want to be even more annoying and going to sleep with monsters nearby, I think this phrase will still haunt us in 20 years. All you've got to do is bring over a mob, name tag it, and hide it underneath your friend's bed. A creeper is best for this because it's silent and it'll take forever for your friend to find it. And when they do, Play on the side of the hostile mobs. You can throw armor at mobs and they'll wear it. Steal armor from the other players and keep giving it to the enemies to make them an unstoppable force. It is illegal to sell or buy accounts to other players. So why not tell everyone you're doing just that as much as possible until someone runs off to tell Mojang what an evil person you are. Duping items is an incredibly difficult thing to do on a server because all the item information is kept on a server's computer. But some places have exploitable weaknesses. A server that has its own spawn and teleport system can be tricked into dropping your items at the same time that you spawn. So the items are dropped, but also kept on your hop bar at the same time. It's an immediate bannable offense. Put traps in XP farms. Nearly every server has one. So why not put a sensor beside it? So when someone comes for some valuable XP, the whole thing breaks open and they're overwhelmed and violent mobs hell bent on revenge. Most servers ban you for making holes to the void, where people fall in and die. But what's worse is making someone fall to the void and catch them on a boat hanging in the void. They'll struggle to get back up, but they won't want to die and lose their items either. Make a wither in the server owner's house. Those withers can absolutely destroy almost any block in the game. So unsurprisingly, it's one of the fastest ways to wreak havoc and destroy all the hard work that the server owner has put in their beautiful home. It's common sense to chop down a whole tree rather than leaving it unfinished. But who needs common sense? Why not just keep chopping trees and leaving them all with just one block left? The world will be filled with these floating packs of leaves that will stay there forever. Spawn a wither to help you break in. The wither's attacks can destroy almost any block in Minecraft. So Laura to your friend's base and watch it make massive holes even in obsidian walls. Jump in and take their stuff. Use their XP farms against them. If it looks like this, then the bottom of the farm will often end up inside their base because it's more convenient for them. Climb into the top of the XP farm. It'll be funneled down to the bottom and you can break out into the heart of their base. This pig can walk through walls. If you ride a pig up to the wall of the base and then get off it, you can hit the pig and the brief damage reaction will nudge the pig a tiny bit into the wall. Quickly ride the pig and it will continue going forward, letting you ride right through the wall. Don't worry about punching your pig either. Just means free bacon in your friend's house. What if the base is hidden or has a secret entrance you just can't figure out? If you know the general area the base is, just eat a chorus fruit. It can teleport you to some crazy places, including through solid walls, ignoring the secret entrance completely. Everyone knows Jeb, the developer from Mojang. So pretend to be him in a server and people will be falling over themselves to be nice to you. You're a celebrity. Use that power to get items and even money until Jeb finds out and bans you personally. Personally. Everyone loves a good water feature, so steal all the water using sponges. They suck everything up so fast and are really easy to dry, so you can take all the water in the game. But don't worry, the fish don't need it. See, they're jumping for joy. Rain arrow hell upon the world with a machine gun. Set up this repeating redstone pattern, then attach a bunch of dispensers filled with thousands of arrows. If the sky filling up with enough arrows to blot out the sun won't get you banned, the sheer amount of entities could make the server crash. Impersonate the server owner by getting an account with a nearly identical name. Then when you enter that server, start causing mayhem. Break people's stuff and use terribly foul language. Do this enough and everyone will hate the owner until they realize you're impersonating them and ban you. Threaten real life violence against a server owner. That's a crime in Minecraft and in real life that will definitely get you banned. Trust me, I would know. Everybody wants to have the most diamonds on a server, right? But it can take ages to find them on the ground. Now, of course, there's ways to search caves faster and a way to strip mine 10 diamonds an hour, but screw that. We're trying to get banned. That's 
where X-ray texture packs come in. Completely breaking the game, these texture packs make every block but diamonds invisible. Meaning, when you look down, you can see exactly where the diamonds are. This is one of the oldest cheats in Minecraft, and almost all servers completely ban it. And remember, if you get caught, say you just got lucky. One of the strangest things in the world of Minecraft accounts is that at one point, you could make accounts with the same name. You could only do this with some really sneaky tricks, but it led to some pretty funny incidents. On Hypixel, the biggest server there is, you could actually teleport if you had both of the accounts with the same name. This meant you could go anywhere you wanted on the map and surprise enemies in PvP games. It totally ruined the game for everyone else. And as you can imagine, the admins don't like this at all. So if you're one of the lucky ones who can do this, use it wisely. Mojang has another big rule about accounts, but this one might be something you guys have done without even knowing. You're actually not allowed to use somebody else's accounts, the same way Netflix doesn't like you sharing passwords. That's right, even if it's someone in your family, they need their own account. One of the easiest ways to get banned is to spawn kill someone. But did you know you can also spawn grab someone in the end? In lots of servers, the end is usually a place to go and collect rare and valuable items and is super dangerous, so they'll come in good gear. This means you can trap the obsidian platform, use swords, lava, and even end crystals to take them out super quick. You can even use one of the traps from my last video and send a bunch of TNT to the end first, so anyone that goes through gets blown up instantly. Do this enough times and you'll secure yourself that good old tasty ban. Delicious. When playing on competitive servers, you're gonna need to hide your base somewhere in the wilderness, away from any prying eyes that want to steal your items. However, one of the most annoying and cruel things you can do is to leak the coordinates of your team's base. Other teams will flock straight to the location and fight over anything they can possibly find. Because of how evil this is, most servers ban anyone that leaks coordinates. And if you want to take it a step further, how about you leak his house address too? Speaking of servers, ever joined a hardcore survival server? As all you need to do to get banned is to die. Huh. Who knew getting banned could be that easy? If you've ever tried shooting through a door, you'd know the arrows won't go through the hole of the door, even though there's clearly enough space for an arrow to fit through. But with items like pistons, chains, or a slanted staircase, you'll be able to shoot right through. So yeah, make your doors as chains so you can shoot intruders. This game makes no sense. Make sure you shoot the dogs. Want to be immortal in Minecraft? Well, there's a game-breaking tactic in the game which makes it impossible for you to die. An emo's worst nightmare. To do this, just craft a boat, place it on the ground, and get in and out of it really quickly. It'll trick Minecraft into thinking you're still inside of the boat. From there, you can jump off high buildings, live underwater, and blow yourself up without taking any damage at all. And the best thing is, if you ever get trapped or get lost, you can always just press shift to teleport back into the boat. Now that's pretty cool, depending on your age, and if you like Minecraft. Pretty subjective, really. But even cooler than an immortal glitch is a building that will literally morph you into an unkillable soldier. If you're familiar with anarchy servers, you have definitely heard of 2B2T. Anarchy servers have absolutely no rules, meaning you can do anything. Rob banks, grief bases, or kill lots of dogs. But the one thing you cannot do is building a lag machine. But obviously, players decided to break it, building this huge structure which was over 100 blocks tall and looked amazing. However, it didn't go to plan, as instead players near the machine had their hitboxes disappear, making them literally immortal. This machine was mysteriously removed, never to be seen or spoken about again. This is a regular nether portal, and this is a heather nortal. Wait, what? Well, Minecraft has a history of weird nether portals, there's never been anything quite as weird as this one, literally. To do this, you need an update suppressor, which is a structure that allows you to force skip block updates by basically bugging the game out of functioning. And let's be honest, I have no idea how you do this, and you probably don't care either. So after some off-camera building, here it is! A Heather Nortal. Now that's one of life's greatest achievements. When Mojang added XP, they expected you to farm it by killing edible mobs your dogs, and leveling up the normal way. However, what Mojang didn't expect is if you put a ton of mobs all in the same place, they will die of entity cramming. And you can get that sweet, sweet XP. And with Sweeping Edge, you can kill the rest of them with one hit, making it possible to create a self-sustaining mob farm that just feeds you XP. Huh, so that's how McDonald's works. So if you really really want to break Minecraft? I got something for you. If you create a world with the only blocks being ladders, they will defy logic and not let you climb as intended, making you fall indefinitely into the void. This is probably the most useless thing you could ever do. But hey, from a distance, this looks pretty cool. And, oh wait, 
My game crashed. That was worth. I feel very accomplished. Did you know you can push the Ender Dragon through an end gate into the overworld? You need this big apparatus and a simple flying machine. There's a way to push the dragon into an end gate, which will spawn a dragon in the overworld. Watch the chaos for as long as you can before the server takes revenge with a ban. Trick everyone into getting trapped on the nether roof. It's easy. Just break the portal in the nether and remake it on the roof. It's nearly impossible to get back down from there, especially when you break the portal once people have walked through. You won't be able to get off the roof either, but who cares? You're getting banned anyway. Fill the server with mobs that won't add to the mob cap. Endermen holding blocks, zombie villagers, vexes, shulkers, and all sorts of others don't have a limit. If you gather enough of them, it'll lag the server to a crawl. Here's a trick to play on AFK players. Why not build a maze around them? In fact, why not make the walls out of falling lava for some extra spice? Get real dangerous with this deadly portal trick. Just drop some activated TNT into an end portal, but don't go in yourself. The TNT will only explode in the end when someone is there. So wait for your friend to go in first. All the TNT you drop there will explode at the same time, sending your friend sky high. This secret little trick makes it look like this hole is full of water, but the water is actually only a block deep. Using pistons and slime blocks, you can create a floating block of water that doesn't fall. Once your friend swims down through it, it's a straight drop to their death. This trick makes it look like a regular mining tunnel, but there's a secret. If you place redstone ore into the floor and connect that to a hidden observer, this ore becomes a trap trigger. Hide some TNT under that and your friend won't know what hit him. This trick is so murky, I can barely even see. This is because you can hide campfires underneath your friend's flooring and the smoke will float up through. Put as many as you can and they'll have to tear up their house just to get rid of them. Speaking of bombs, uh I'm sorry! Did you know that TNT dropped into an end portal doesn't actually explode until you jump in yourself? It even keeps its fuse length. So if you drop it from around 70 blocks up, it'll instantly blow up whoever is unfortunate enough to head through next, along with all the valuable gear they were bringing too. Dripstone works too if you're not feeling that mean, but let's face it, you'd rather blow them up. Another great way to blow someone sky high is with TNT minecarts. Sure, there's all these ways to create nukes with them, but let's face it, you're gonna have to end up cleaning that up. So instead, if someone has a railway down to their mines, just add a couple TNT minecarts at the end. When they run into them and blow up, if anything, you're just helping them mine. Since they were added in the 1.13 update, bubble columns have been the absolute best elevator solution we've had. And conveniently, there's tons of ways to trap them and make your friends' lives just a little bit worse. The easiest is to surround the top in obsidian, so they have to spend ages mining it while underwater to get out. But my personal favorite is to shoot a bunch of tipped arrows in the water that hit anyone coming up. Instant damage or poison and works to give them a real scare. But I prefer to use slowness to create just the tiniest inconvenience for them. One of the simplest ways to really make someone mad in Minecraft is to simply just fill up their house with water. It takes you two minutes to place a bunch of water or ice on their roof, but will take them forever to place and break blocks everywhere to get rid of it all. If you want to be really evil, you can bone meal a bunch of kelp to make all of the water source blocks. So without sponges, they're going to be there for years. If you want to take your friend out in a super creative way, try using this super a unique trick. When there's enough entities in a small place, it'll start dealing damage to them. That means if you can get your friend to fall into a hole with a bunch of minecarts, it'll start damaging them automatically. Dripstone can drop and do real damage, so why not use this hack to make a fun defense for your castle? Bounce the dripstone off these slime blocks and pistons, and the stone will be launched out toward any incoming players storming your fort. Powdered snow is technically a full block, but you can actually pass through it with this weird hack. It turns out you can fly through it with elytra, passing through to the other side without losing any speed. So why not use it as a secret wall or entrance? Buy some water travel systems for your items can end up with traffic jams, especially the corners. So use this build hack to make your system perfecto. Put two sea pickles at the corner and they will guide the items around the corners, sticking to the edge of the tunnel, straight to their destination. Get your minecarts going fast with this high speed hack with much less redstone. Minecarts take turns fast. So if you lay your rails out into these circles, the minecarts will turn constantly, gaining super fast and still in a straight line. Just close your eyes while it's happening. <laughs> this quick and easy hack lets you build an iron farm really fast and really early in the game. All you need is an iron golem spawning platform that's very small and a campfire at the top, leaving no room for the golem to walk away from it, taking damage and dropping all of its precious iron. I like to call this trick the drip leaf drop. A big drip leaf creates a platform that can hold you up, but it folds soon after. Grow one above a big pit and lead your friend over it. You'll trigger the fold 
loud, and they'll fall right in. <laughs> hey! If your friend is online and you can access a house, play a really weird trick by building an upside down version of their house on top of their regular house. It's a bizarre, mind bending monument that will take time to remove if they even want to. If your friend is a pet dog, a real sadistic trick is to replace it with your own. Hide their dog and name your own dog the same name. Then watch as your friend struggles, wondering why it won't listen to them anymore. You can even hit your friend and watch as they run screaming from the dog they thought was their best friend. Everyone knows bedrock is a completely unbreakable block. And in most Minecraft servers, breaking bedrock will get you banned. However, there's a catch. As in the nether, if you climb a ladder placed on the very top block of bedrock and throw an ender pearl like this, you teleport straight through the ceiling, putting you on top of the nether. But that's not all, as it's actually possible to break bedrock as well. All it takes is this simple TNT machine. Hop under the trap door, flick the lever, and right click as fast as you can with a piston in your hand. If you click fast enough, the bedrock below the piston will glitch out and disappear, just like my dad when I was a child. Then he came back and ran away again. But a more obvious way to get banned is to hack. Auto clickers are the most common hack, letting you click super fast without doing anything. This lets you place blocks super fast, bridge in crazy ways, or absolutely dominate in 1.8 PvP. But if you're really trying to get banned, fly hacks are the way to go. And yes, they do exactly what you think, allowing you to fly anywhere you want in survival mode. For obvious reasons, almost no servers allow this, making it one of the best ways to get banned. But if you want to go out with a bang, you should try lava casting. If you go on to 2B2T, a server with no rules, you'll see these everywhere. Using lava and water, people build these huge lava casts to scar the landscape of servers. They're super annoying to get rid of, but really easy to build. Start by building a staircase straight up into the sky, as high as you possibly can. Then it's as simple as placing a lava bucket at the top, waiting, then placing water above, and ta-da! Now all your friends hate you. Well, more so than before, if that's possible. Ever wanted to get overpowered on an SMP so you can kill everyone? Because everyone knows the best way to get banned is to start wars and kill people. Well, there's a special trick with villagers that lets you get rich. Gather a whole bunch of villagers together and simply let a zombie loose on them. It might sound dumb, but trust me, once they've been turned into zombie villagers, cure them with weakness potions and golden apples. This basically makes you their daddy, and they'll give you a nice discount on all trades. Then you can repeat this until all their trades cost just one emerald. So if someone asks how you've got mending on literally everything, don't tell them the secret. Hey, you ever wanted infinite TNT? If so, here's the solution. If you build the following contraption, you'll be able to duplicate TNT forever. Something about the coral reef glitches the TNT, allowing for a devastating bug. This is something commonly used in Minecraft Warfare, creating flying machines with infinite TNT to nuke your enemy's base. So if you want to break Minecraft with a bang, try this out sometime. Everyone knows you can't place water in the nether. Or can you? If you build a time machine and travel all the way back to Minecraft version 1.6, you'll need to stock up on ice blocks. Why? Well, my friend, in this version, if you break ice in the nether, you get water, allowing you to technically turn the nether into a water park. My life is finally complete. And I've got a cool time machine to boot, so that's pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah. Okay, so villagers aren't the smartest mobs, but did you know they're immortal? Just kidding, did you really believe that? But they kind of are, because if you make a glass container and have a villager go in for a little nap, you can surround him all with lava and watch him die! <laughs> Wait, how the f*** did he survive? Really, Mojang? I'm trying to have fun here and be an evil man. Gas are annoying. Let's be honest, they're ugly. Hurt your eyes. They suck. That is until you use them to turn them into a gassed turret. Yes, you heard that right. You can trap gas and turn them into your own turret machine. By clicking fast, you're able to direct the fire balls to wherever you want, making it the perfect defense for infinite TNT flying machines. And also just destroying your friend's house and their dogs and their dog's dogs. Trust me, bro, it wasn't me. My grandma can vouch. I hate you. See, people say you should plant a tree to save the planet. So why not plant as many trees as you can? Flood the place with saplings on every block of dirt and bone meal them to make a mega forest so thick you have to bring out the axes just to walk to the farm. Create chaos with a witch spawner. Build this village breeding station and when the children are born, they'll be funneled down under a lightning rod. Once lightning strikes, they'll all be turned into witches to be let loose on the server, and it will keep happening forever! Or at least until you get banned and your spawner is destroyed. Invite death squads! If you can get new people onto the server, bring the biggest, baddest gamers you know as death squads against your enemies. If anyone crosses you, bring your cronies for a beatdown until they get fed up and ban you. Go nuke the server using 
and slime blocks, pistons, detectors, and a minecart, build a flying TNT duplicator just like this one and watch it trundle ominously over the server, dropping bombs with every step. Leave no player alive and no building left standing! Use this secret trick to see players through walls. Pressing F3 and A refreshes all visuals and will show entities first for a split second. Spam it and you can track people down to hunt and kill them, just like I'm gonna do right now! Did your friends store their enchantment books and ordered chess? Play a trick by replacing some of their high level books with level 1 books. They all look the same, so they might not even notice until it's already too late. No matter how many chickens your friend clears away, more keep coming with this next trick. Stuff a bunch of chickens above a hopper. The eggs go into a dispenser with a repeater causing it to shoot the eggs out, spawning a bunch more chickens in the process. Hide this contraption in a tree near your friend's house and he'll be drowning in chicks. Wanna trap your AFK friend in a little box? It's the first trick anyone tries, but if you waterlog the blocks, it becomes so much harder to break. And when they do, your friend will be drowning in water. What's the most evil thing you can possibly do in Minecraft? Griefing? Duplicating? Even camping someone spawn? I don't think it's any of these. The worst thing you can do is killing someone's pet, of course! People love their little friends, and you just know someone's gonna run straight to an admin if you hurt them. That's why you gotta do it invisible. <laughs> That's more like it. <clears throat> Oh crap. Now, nobody likes someone who swears all the time, so you gotta use this to your advantage. If you're really looking to get banned quickly off a server or even Minecraft itself, there's a whole lot of words that can achieve this very, very quickly. Though I probably shouldn't say them in this video. F Getting banned in Minecraft is one thing, but what about something that can actually get you sent to jail? Now that's more like it. We talked about lag earlier, but there's actually a way to completely stop someone using their internet called a DDoS attack. If somebody gets your IP address, they can overload your router and completely stop it working. If anyone catches you doing this, you'll instantly get banned from any server and even have the police called on you. Oh, crap. It wasn't me! It was the dog! Minecraft skins are a perfect canvas to express your creativity. From a a turd to Michael Jackson, skins show to others who we are. But this, this is the opposite of beautiful. Oh my god, what is that? These kinds of skins are the reason most servers and even Minecraft itself bans any form of inappropriate skin. From curse words written across you to rather flattering depictions of other things, if you want to get banned, you know what to do. And if you want something to match your new skin, we can't forget inappropriate buildings. In SMPs, faction servers, and skyblock servers, you're able to create whatever you want. Given us the perfect opportunity to shape our house however we want. Ah, that's more like it. Ever wanted a girlfriend? Well, good luck, because e-daters are running rampant on Minecraft these days, and a lot of servers think that they need to be stopped, banning dating in Minecraft. So if you're really looking for a quick ban, why don't you just come and kiss me? I mean, get a room, guys! Seriously. In snowy areas, some bases will have secret entrances covered with powdered snow. Wait until night, and if you see some snow on a mountain that's slightly brighter than the rest, that's light coming through from the inside. Get an elytra and fly straight into that snow. You'll pass right through into the base. If your friend is a locked door, make your own redstone mechanism to open it. Nothing is stopping you from bypassing whatever complex system they made inside the walls by just placing down and activating a redstone block against the door. If your friend's base has its own private nether portal and use that as a way in. Find the coordinates of the connected portal in the nether by taking the overworld coordinates of the base and dividing the x and the z by 8. That's where the portal in the nether will be, giving you a back door into the protected fortress. If the building you're breaking into is full of death traps, just stock up on totems of undying. It's way easier than trying to avoid everything. Just take the hit and keep on moving. Players will often have secret tunnels that lead far away to their stash. If you x-ray by crawling and pressing a slab into your face with a piston, you can see Seek out small separate rooms filled with blocks. Dig toward those because they're less likely to be well defended. And we'll have a corridor straight into the base. Try this pit trap as a dirty trick to play. Dig a huge hole, put up a bunch of scaffolding to cover the top. Cover that with snow and put a little treat in the center. Hide at the bottom and wait for them to take the bait. Then hit the scaffold and watch them tumble down to their death. Here's a trick they might not notice at first but will hate when they notice. Dig out the blocks under your friend's house. Then put path blocks all around it. Path blocks are slightly smaller so the gap will show the the empty underside of their house, but only if you're looking carefully. Once they notice, they'll see it everywhere. This will also help with this truly terrible trick. This gap under the house will fill up with monsters as they spawn in the dark. When your friend least expects it, will hear the growl of a zombie dangerously close and would have no idea where it's coming from. Have another great defense hack that brings an adorable edge to your builds. If you want to keep creepers away from blowing up all your hard work, get a bunch of cats. The more, the better. Creepers and even phantoms are afraid of them and will turn and run if the cat gets too close. 
fish. This hack lets you show off a puffer fish in a glass case, puffed up at all times. It does this because there's actually an armored stand underneath, keeping it on edge. Above the stand is a waterlogged chest, keeping the fish alive, and a picture frame to cover that up. The glass case is a block that's been pushed on top with a piston to keep the fish in place. Optical illusions can be used in some crazy hacks, like this house that watches you wherever you go, thanks to the way those creepy eyes have been made. They actually sink into the building, creating that creepy illusion. I've got my eye on you. This weird hack takes advantage of a cute little axolotl. If you tie a leash to one and connect that to a post, that post gets this cool rope model put on it. And when you pick the axolotl up again in the bucket, the leash is gone, but the rope stays, providing a nice detail to your fancy bridge or fence. Check out this insane near illegal hack, where this water is somehow protected from the lava. What's actually happening is that the lower block has a waterlogged sign, and that sign is keeping the lava up, while the waterlogging makes sure it doesn't burn. It's a crazy hack which can be a crazy decoration to show your friends. Find out if the server owner has a pet, then find an animal that looks just like it in the game. Tag it with the same name, then taunt the server owner as you kill the pet in cold blood! It's an awful thing to do and will definitely get you banned. Why not go further? Find their real pet and kill it in front of them! Though you'll probably get banned from society for that one. <laughs> See you in jail! This special book will get you insta-banned. If you fill a book with text, get a bunch of books filled with that text, and then put it in a shulker box, the moment anyone opens that box, the server overloads and the player is instantly banned. Destroy the rarest item in the game. If you get into a server early, speedrun killing the ender dragon and get that dragon egg first. Chuck it into the void and nobody will ever get the egg ever without cheating. Use a VPN. Microsoft hate when people try to bend the rules, so they will ban you if they find out you're using a VPN. You can use Mojang as a weapon. Go into a server and report everyone in the server to be banned. It might even work. Getting innocent people banned for no reason. But if the server owners don't ban you, Mojang will catch on and ban you for false reports. Rule PvP with this evil cheat that will definitely get you banned. If you can access commands, turn your armor invisible with this command. That'll teach them for giving you so much power. A real dirty trick only works if your friend puts down signs. Be a little mischievous by moving the signs around and swapping them about. They'll get lost in no time. In a snowy area, try this bouncy castle trick. Build a castle with a spot where you need to drop down. Cover the lower area with slime blocks. Cover that with snow. And when your friend drops down onto it, they'll bounce wildly out of control into whatever has you want. This trick is simple and classic. Chests don't open when there's a block above them, so put some obsidian on top and watch your friends slowly chip away just so they can access their tools. This next trick requires your very own pet zombie. Put a name tag on them, hide them under your friend's bed, and watch as a game won't let them sleep because enemies are too close by. Hey, you ever wanted infinite TNT? If so, here's the solution. If you build the following contraption, you'll be able to duplicate TNT forever! Something about the coral reef glitches the TNT, allowing for a devastating stating bug. This is something commonly used in Minecraft Warfare, creating flying machines with infinite TNT to nuke your enemy's base. So if you want to break Minecraft with a bang, try this out sometime. Everyone knows you can't place water in the nether. Or can you? If you build a time machine and travel all the way back to Minecraft version 1.6, you'll need to stock up on ice blocks. Why? Well, my friend, in this version, if you break ice in the nether, you get water, allowing you to technically turn the nether into a water park. My life is finally complete. And I've got a cool time machine to boot, so that's pretty cool, yeah? <laughs> I think it's cool, yeah. Okay, so villagers aren't the smartest mobs, but did you know they're immortal? Just kidding, did you really believe that? But they kind of are, because if you make a glass container and have a villager go in for a little nap, you can surround him all with lava and watch him die! <laughs> Wait, how the f*** did he survive? Really, Mojang? I'm trying to have fun here and be an evil man. Guests are annoying. Let's be honest, they're ugly. Hurt your eyes. They suck. That is until you use them to turn them into a gassed turret. Yes, you heard that right. You can trap gas and turn them into your own turret machine. By clicking fast, you're able to direct the fireballs to wherever you want, making it the perfect defense for infinite TNT flying machines. And also just destroying your friend's house and their dogs and their dog's dogs. Trust me, bro, it wasn't me. My grandma can vouch. I hate you. See? Stuck up on boats so you can cross any body of lava, including lava columns. If you put a boat into the lava, you have a spit second to jump off it before it breaks. Leap forward and put another boat down to continue across the lava, until finally you reach your friend's base. Did you know you can actually do a super jump with just a flint and steel? Set fire to a block and jump into the fire. Jump again as you take damage and the impact will propel you a little higher, letting you jump two and sometimes three blocks high. No fence can stand in your way. Disguise yourself in deceptive Minecraft skins. Some of these are banned in many servers, but if you dress to look like the blocks the base is made of, you can blend in and sneak in behind your friends as they walk through the front door. Everybody wants 
to have the most diamonds on a server, right? But it can take ages to find them on the ground. Now, of course, there's ways to search caves faster and a way to strip mine 10 diamonds an hour, but screw that. We're trying to get banned. That's where X-ray texture packs come in, completely breaking the game. These texture packs make every block but diamonds invisible, meaning when you look down, you can see exactly where the diamonds are. This is one of the oldest cheats in Minecraft, and almost all servers completely ban it. And remember, if you get caught, say you just got lucky. One of the strangest things in the world of Minecraft accounts is that at one point, you could make accounts with the same name. You could only do this with some really sneaky tricks, but it led to some pretty funny incidents. On Hypixel, the biggest server there is, you could actually teleport if you had both of the accounts with the same name. This meant you could go anywhere you wanted on the map and surprise enemies in PvP games. It totally ruined the game for everyone else, and as you can imagine, the admins don't like this at all. So if you're one of the lucky ones who can do this, use it wisely. Mojang has another big rule about accounts, but this one might be something you guys have done without even knowing. You're actually not allowed to use somebody else's account, the same way Netflix doesn't like you sharing passwords. That's right, even if it's someone in your family, they need their own account. One of the easiest ways to get banned is to spawn kill someone. But did you know you can also spawn grab someone in the end? In lots of servers, the end is usually a place to go and collect rare and valuable items and is super dangerous. Dangerous, so they'll come in good gear. This means you can trap the obsidian platform, use swords, lava, and even end crystals to take them out super quick. You can even use one of the traps from my last video and send a bunch of TNT to the end first, so anyone that goes through gets blown up instantly. Do this enough times and you'll secure yourself that good old tasty ban. Delicious. When playing on competitive servers, you're gonna need to hide your base somewhere in the wilderness, away from any prying eyes that want to steal your items. However, one of the most annoying and cruel things you can do is to leak the coordinates of your team's base. Other teams will flock straight to the location and fight over anything they can possibly find. Because of how evil this is, most servers ban anyone that leaks coordinates. And if you want to take it a step further, how about you leak his house address too? Speaking of servers, ever joined a hardcore survival server as all you need to do to get banned is to die? <laughs> Who knew getting banned could be that easy? Mojang has given themselves the power to ban people and hate when you have items with dangerous names. If they're rude, illegal, or named after real-world guns, Mojang will ban you completely. You're in someone else's server, so why not advertise your own server and entice people to join it? It'll make the server owner so mad as you endlessly pull people away from their precious world. Get this invisible block! No, it's not a barrier block, but actually block 36, a glitched piston that was duplicated using an end crystal and this machine. Put an item frame on it and it goes invisible. Since it's a glitch block, when you stack sand on them, the sand stays there, but still acts like it's falling, so people can fall through it. A perfect invisible trap. Why not skip the middleman and just hack the server owner's account? That way you don't have to wait for a ban, you can just do it yourself. And if red isn't your favorite color, harming potions are super useful for taking out those dreaded mobs or enemies. But when it comes to zombies, these potions actually heal them. I suppose they're dead anyway. So if you want to kill a zombie, throw a healing potion at them to damage them instead. Nice attention to detail, Mojang. Turns out locking is easier than you think, as you can add a glass pane to a map to lock it, meaning it won't update if anything changes. This can be great for documenting the progress of your base over time, or creating a permanent design of an upside down T. If you bring bottles with you to the end fight, you can actually pick up the purple particles the dragon shoots at you. These are called potions of dragon's breath, and can be used to craft tipped arrows or lingering potions. I guess we should brush first. Speaking of bombs, uh, I'm sorry. Did you know that TNT dropped into an end portal doesn't actually explode until you jump in yourself? It even keeps its fuse length. So if you drop it from around 70 blocks up, it'll instantly blow up whoever is unfortunate enough to head through next, along with all the valuable gear they were bringing too. Dripstone works too if you're not feeling that mean, but let's face it, you'd rather blow them up. Another great way to blow someone sky high is with TNT minecarts. Sure, there's all these ways to create nukes with them, but let's face it, you're gonna have to end up cleaning that up. So instead, if someone has a railway down to their mines, just add a couple TNT minecarts at the end. When they run into them and blow up, if anything, you're just helping them mine. Since they were added in the 1.13 update, bubble columns have been the absolute best elevator solution we've had. And conveniently, there's tons of ways to trap them and make your friend's life just a little bit worse. The easiest is to surround the top in obsidian, so they have to spend ages mining it while underwater to get out. But my personal favorite is to shoot a bunch of tipped arrows in the water that hit anyone coming up. Instant damage or poison
poison works to give them a real scare, but I prefer to use slowness to create just the tiniest inconvenience for them. One of the simplest ways to really make someone mad in Minecraft is to simply just fill up their house with water. It takes you two minutes to place a bunch of water or ice on their roof, but will take them forever to place and break blocks everywhere to get rid of it all. If you want to be really evil, you can bone meal a bunch of kelp to make all of the water source blocks, so without sponges, they're going to be there for years. If you want to take your friend out in a super creative way, try using this super unique trick. When there's enough entities in a small place, it'll start dealing damage to them. That means if you can get your friend to fall into a hole with a bunch of minecarts, it'll start damaging them automatically. A server owner can use creative to build a house out of bedrock. Break through with the latest bedrock cracking machine. Using a piston, a trapdoor, some TNT, obsidian, and a lever, you can glitch the game to destroying the bedrock and letting you in. They say the safest base is a hidden one. So how do you break in if you can't even find it? Look for the FPS drop. If you turn on the FPS counter using the settings on your PC or FN plus F3 on a Mac, you can see how fast your game is running. If you're out in the wilderness, the FPS should be high. But if there's a bunch of entities nearby like chess, players, or armor stands, the FPS will take a slight dip. That means the base is nearby. Start digging! This insane block placement glitch lets you climb invisible ghost blocks. If you swap a block into your offhand and place it at the same time, it will exist in the world but be invisible. You can climb walls without a trace. But even better, if you use slime blocks, it will launch you into the air, letting you scale tall towers at high speed. Want to get your plants to stop growing so tall? Try this simple hack by placing string at the top. It will actually stop your plant from growing any further, and it's almost invisible. Perfect when you want to take a fancy picture without the bamboo blocking the shot. The sound of villagers waking you to the sound of their people can be great, but not if they all die during the night. So try this build hack to get them safe indoors. Bells can be activated with redstone, so just put a pressure plate by your bed, and when you go to rest, so will they. Do you need a protector for your base? How about a guardian with this simple hack? Put a guardian outside your home, and any player coming for your goodies will get blasted! Here's a defense hack that looks invisible. It's actually these azalea bushes, because apparently mobs don't know how to jump over them, even though you can. So if you want a safe house that doesn't look like a prison, this works great. Also, killing mob farms are great for items, but this hack lets you get the XP from it too. Just sit one of your dogs next to a non-fatal drop like this. They'll get that last hit, and you'll get the experience. What a great team up. Speaking of mob farms, it can be a hassle making them, especially in the nether. But if you're specifically trying to get Enderman, this high IQ hack can make it way easier. Enderman hates Endermite, so use them as bait above a hole, and the Enderman will drop right in for the easy killing. On Minecraft Bedrock Edition, you can create a literal piece of art. Using a command block to place hundreds of end crystals, the crystals will actually stack, creating something that doesn't even look like Minecraft. Just make sure you don't run into it. Or walk, or crawl, just, just stay away! Over the years of Minecraft, farms have gotten more and more advanced. We went from farming melons to a fully functional wither farm. Using TNT, arrows, and insanely precise timing, these people built a machine able to get arrows to supersonic speeds, allowing you to one-shot the wither and farm its resources while AFK. In fact, there's even a functional wolf farm, which offers a new home to live dogs! Just turn it on and there we go. Hey, what happened to all my dogs? I didn't kill them. I, I, I did not. If you're persistent and dumb enough to cover your whole world with hoppers, your game will become extremely buggy, lagging, glitching, and as a bonus, if you drop a beacon onto one of these, your game will literally die. That is my grandma. Just kidding, she's right here. It's me, the grandma. I'm alive. See you, Grandma. That being said, do not put beacons into random hoppers. Not only are beacons valuable, but there's a small chance of your computer exploding. If you want to destroy your world in a stylish way, you can try and place a bunch of iron trap doors, then add skulk sensor blocks below that. From there, just blow it the hell up, or fly above it and drop a single block into it in a super stylish manner before seeing your game slowly die. You're very weird. Shut up, Grandma! Let's set the scene. You hear the music? Music. You're feeling nostalgic. So you go back to 1.9 beta Minecraft to load your old world. Then you realize something is terribly wrong. And it's not just your dating life. The ender portal looks like... Seriously, what the hell is this? This block was the old ender portal frame. And it looked really messed up. Sort of like an ice block mixed with grass. The ender portal looks a lot better now. And boy, am I glad they changed it. Uh-oh, shulker sensors have been placed all over this minefield. One noise, and it all goes up. You could sneak by, but you can easily get caught. So you've got to move fast. The answer is to jump and sneak. If you constantly jump the entire way and press the sneak button, just as you hit the ground each time, you can go fast and stay quiet enough for the sensors not to notice you. This next trick will let
let you fly up to high buildings without TNT or a Lytra. The trick is to get your own pet shulker. You need to catch them in a boat or minecart that leads to the end gate out of the end city, and eventually through the main end portal into the overworld. Throw them away in a boat toward the target base and let yourself get cursed with levitation. You'll fly up into the sky, and with a good enough levitation, it won't matter how high the base is. Use subterfuge! If your friend is in need of a certain mob, like a particular villager or perhaps the ultra-rare brown panda, get one for yourself and offer to bring it to their base. You can lead it over, and you'll get access to the base as you bring the creature into its new home. Once inside, steal as many items as you can. It's fair payment for such a rare panda. An endangered species, you know. Fencing has been used to cover this entire opening. There's no way in without breaking it. Unless you get a trap door. The crawl mechanic actually changes your hitbox. And with a fence like this, if you set up a trap door right next to it and make yourself crawl, you'll be halfway through the fence already. Just keep moving through and you'll slide right in without breaking a single block. And finally, there's no point getting in if you get caught. So try this teleporting escape plan. If you make a bubble column with an open trap door and a redstone torch at the top, you can throw an ender pearl in. And when the torch is activated, the door will close. You'll be teleported to the pearl. Attach a clock mechanism like this and you can give yourself enough time to break in, do your dirty deeds, and disappear even if you get caught. If somebody has a carpet in their house, they've left themselves open to one of the easiest and most annoying pranks in the game. All it takes is for you to tear up their carpet and place a bunch of water below, and then fill it up with puffer fish. As soon as they walk home and expect to lay down on their comfy, cozy carpet, they'll get a spiky surprise. Don't you think it's weird that all dogs look exactly the same in Minecraft? You can use this to really mess with people. All you've got to do is push someone's dog somewhere hidden and replace it with your own. When your friend comes to grab their dog for walkies, they'll spend ages trying to figure out why they can't make it sit up. Just make absolutely sure that you don't hurt their dog in the process at all. Oh god, I can't help myself! Did you know you can add the curse of binding to a carved pumpkin? And that you can equip carved pumpkins with dispensers? I think you get the idea. You can place a dispenser pretty much anywhere, like under somebody's door. And before they know it, yeah, where's the nearest cliff? Does your friend have one of those ugly gravel paths around their house? Well, to punish them for not using this build hack for my last video, try this. Tear up their gravel path and dig out a pit below. Then add a bunch of signs placed like this that'll hold the gravel up. All you need now is a piston that would remove this block. And as soon as you step on this pressure plate, it all falls down! I'd also recommend filling the pit with cobwebs above some lava to really make them think about what they've done. Spawn trapping is one of the most annoying things to do to someone in any game. And luckily, it's super simple to do in Minecraft. All you need to do is remove all the blocks around someone's bed and place this obsidian chamber right next to it instead. Whenever they respawn, they'll be trapped in here without tools and forced to punch their way out. There are tons of ways to mess with AFK players in Minecraft that are way more fun than just pushing them into lava. For example, one of my personal favorites is to instead push them into a composter that's filled up to about here, and then close a trap door on top of them. For one, it looks hilarious, but it'll also be super funny to watch your friend try to figure out why they can't open the trap door. And when all is said and done, all they've got to do is break the composter. Help! Mess with their armor dispensers. Put hidden waterlogged blocks there and hidden lava so when they try to interact with a dispenser, they're overwhelmed in lava that quickly turns into obsidian. They won't have a diamond pickaxe to break out either, since if they're looking for armor, they probably just spawned. Find a way to get the debug stick! It's a special stick that can only be given with a command or robbed from a dead player. Get the debug stick and start clicking on everyone's beds. These beds are now marked as occupied and can't be used. To be a real menace, crash the server! It's easy with a lag machine, using this really simple redstone system that can be made as big as you want. The bigger you make it, the more it'll lag, until finally the whole server will crash! This super high IQ hack lets you farm mobs in the nether. Most mob farms use water to funnel the mobs into a drop that kills them, but you can't do that in the nether, so instead use gas in Minecraft. Their big hitbox pushes other mobs to the edges, where you can put a drop down to their doom. It can be great to make a village of your own, complete with villagers, but you need this hack to protect them from invaders. Fill a dispenser with armor and use it to launch the set into a villager. The village will actually use the armor, a perfect defense for your peaceful town. Campfires can look great in your home, but not if it smokes up the place. This hack removes the smoke completely. Just put two layers of string on top and the smoke stops. Filling a swimming pool with buckets of water can take way too long. So try this speedy hack instead. Stack ice blocks along two edges with a gap between, and then break them down at speed with a pickaxe. The water will spill out in such a way that the whole pool gets filled like magic. This boat is actually a trick. When you 
you get in, it explodes into as many boats as you want. To make it, just pour a ton of boats into a hopper that drops into a dispenser on repeat. It will place boat after boat after boat into the same spot on the water. Then you should break the machine apart and watch the chaos from afar as your friend tries to get in. The dirty trick to swipe their goods is to hide a hopper underneath their furnace. Their new smelted ingots fall right into your evil clutches. Keep those stolen goods out of sight by hiding them in chests. These actually have a limit on how far they can be before the game stops showing them. So if you put them all the way to the top of the sky above the clouds, your friend will never find what you took. However, if you want a less legitimate way to get super rich, there's still a bunch of ways to duplicate items in 1.19. By placing a fence under an end portal and dropping an anvil from seven blocks above, it will duplicate the anvil. Activating tripwires attached to trapdoors will duplicate the tripwire hooks. I don't know why you need that many tripwire hooks, but hey, you do you, bro. And if you ever wanted to get infinite TNT, there's a ton of ways to do this using slime blocks, minecarts, and dead coral fans. Just make sure to use this to blow up your friend's build to maximize your chances of getting banned. But if you really like duplication items, we've got one more for you. All you need is some coral, some slime, an observer, a piston, and of course, some carpets. And voila! Carpet heaven. And the best part about this is that you can actually use these carpets as fuel in furnaces. I bet you didn't know that. Now, if you want to take it a step up to secure a Mojang ban, we got your back. As this happens all the time to people who buy accounts considered rare. If Mojang finds out you bought an account from someone else, they will lock it, and you won't even be able to play single-player worlds on it. The most valuable accounts are ones with short or special names like Iron, Moo, or Assman. God, I love that account. Or just generally accounts with special features or exclusive items. Mojang, if you're watching this, please unban Assman. It's all I have left. Everyone hates lag, and in normal cases, you want to avoid it. But when you're trying to get banned, it's your best friend. What most people don't know is that there's a way to lag out entire servers super easily. The best way to do this is to place a whole bunch of soul sand in an ocean, and then throw as many snowballs as you possibly can, which collect into the pool of bubbles. And it's done! All of the bubbles send the snowballs flying up and down, which destroys the server. This lag is so bad, it deserves a prison sentence. Please don't do this, unless you like prison. Which, to be honest, free food, no rent, no parents. That's it, I'm doing this right now. If you want to cause a more permanent problem for your friend, though, this one might be for you. Using this setup of slime blocks and redstone, you can create a rocket that'll send your friend all the way up to the top of the world. Ever notice that light gray stained glass truly ruin your friendship? Try building this in someone's roof, and add a hopper and dispenser to shoot out the eggs to chicken lays. Their house will be filled with baby chicks in no time, and they'll have no idea why. Every Minecraft player knows the pain of this pain look exactly the same as an empty inventory slot. This means you can secretly fill somebody's inventory with them, or worse, fill all their chests with them. And if you name them all differently, they'll have to slowly remove every single piece individually. Speaking of chests, they're a perfect way to test the strength of your friendship. With a comparator, some pistons, and a diamond, you can test exactly how much you should be trusting your friends. One of the best parts about pranking somebody is being able to see their reaction when they realize what's happening, and nothing does that better than this setup made by Grian. Nobody can resist the satisfaction of punching out a huge tower of scaffolding, so build one up above somebody's house, but have it hold just a single block of lava like this. When your friend goes to break it and realizes what's happened, it's already too late, and you'll get to watch them scramble to try and stop it. Another of Grian's devious inventions is the boat bomb, and this one's even simpler. All you've got to do is craft a ton, and I mean a ton of boats, and chuck them on top of a hopper, and dispense them all out like this. As soon as an unsuspecting explorer comes along and tries to get in, yeah, I'll make sure they find this themselves, so you don't have to help clean it up. If your friend wants a nice oxidized copper roof, trick them by secretly waxing the copper blocks with honeycomb. They'll be waiting for days wondering why it's not turning that lovely shade of green. Check out this infinite lightning rod. If you can trap your friend in a room above one, see how long they can survive as lightning constantly strikes around them. Bring extra difficulty by dropping hostile mobs in with them. If your friends love jumping from high places into water, replace the water with blue tinted glass. From afar, it looks identical. And it's hilarious watching the server owner fall to their death because of it. Until you get banned, of course. To face new players with the curse of binding. If you put a dispenser and a pressure plate at world spawn, any new player will activate it when they spawn. Fill it with pumpkins curse with binding so they can't take it off. It's an awful welcome for new players that the server owner will despise. Most servers hate spam, and even Mojang have rules against it. But what if you just love Minecraft story mode a whole lot? Type out the whole script for Minecraft story mode into chat, and see how long it takes for people to ban you for spamming. Convince people to press F3 and C. Everyone knows some F3 inputs, like the debug screen, but holding down F3 and C crashes their game completely. Do it to the right person, 
content and they'll get so mad they'll beg for you to be banned. Hacks are a classic way to get banned in any game. There's a whole bunch of aimbots even for the newest updates of Minecraft. So take your pick and dominate PvP until the inevitable ban hammer comes crashing down. Start a raid in the server's favorite village. If you kill a pillager captain, you'll get a bad omen which will spawn a raid when you get to the village. Get as many bad omens as you can for an extra deadly raid that will wipe out the server's poor innocent villagers. If the server has a huge rail system, find an obscure section in the middle and direct it off into a death trap. It's almost impossible to see when you're going so fast, so they'll be dead before they know it and we'll have to check tons of railing to find the one block you changed. Ever wanted to create a nuclear bomb? Well, you're in luck. All you gotta do is place a rail and stack multiple TNT minecarts on top of each other. This glitches the game and creates an insane amount of explosive power. Just don't touch it or you'll probably end an entire race of villager. When thinking of unbreakable Minecraft blocks, bedrock is probably first to come to mind. You can't break bedrock with lava, TNT, or even a literal nuke. So would it surprise you that all it really takes is snow? In 1.17, if you place a cauldron and fill it up with powdered snow, then place a block above it and click the cauldron, it just disappears. Wow, nice job, Mojang. The wither can't swim, making it impossible to spawn them underwater. However, there's a catch. If you swim to the bottom of the ocean and build a little bunker, you can spawn the wither boss at the bottom of the ocean. And when released, it will kind of just stay in the ocean like a weird fish. So hey, if you want an invincible three-headed fish that does nothing, you know what to do. Did you know you can break Minecraft by predicting exactly where lightning strikes land? Well, most lightning strikes are spontaneous. If you load specific chunks at the right time, as discovered by a group called the Prototech server, you can actually predict and direct lightning strikes. This is extremely useful, making it really easy for you to farm OP mobs, such as Skeleton Horseman. From there, you can collect all their loot and end up a rich man. You can also just farm your friends, which is another really good option. Feel free to add their dogs to spice things up a little. If you've ever been to a village, you'd know pillagers absolutely hate villagers. I mean, like, Mojang literally coded them to find and murder their babies. But you can actually use this to break Minecraft. As pillagers are programmed to be very dumb, very, if you put a villager in a minecart and have him circle around on a railroad, a pillager will forever go in circles, never able to reach him. <laughs> Imagine bullying villagers, losers. Wait, Minecraft seeds are randomly generated, meaning you could find entirely different kinds of structures depending on which world you spawn in. Normally, a good seed starts with spawning near a village or you finding yourself close to a desert temple. However, the best kind of seeds are the ones that absolutely defy all types of Minecraft logic, having weird lava structures like this or a literal glitched ender portal. These seeds completely break and defy every rule of Minecraft. So if you want to break Minecraft, try loading up one of these seeds. That'll give you a good excuse to blow up your friend's base. And their dogs. Don't forget the dogs. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing? It was a Minecraft seed! That doesn't even make any sense! If they have an auto smelter, a simple yet wicked trick is a little sabotage. Clog up the works by putting dirt in the furnaces. They can't smelt it, so they'll be stuck here until your friend cleans them out by hand. String trip wire can block bamboo and sugar cane from growing. And is invisible! Use it in this wicked trick. Put it on your friend's farms and see how long it takes them to notice that bamboo just isn't growing at all. An even better trick to play on AFK friends is to build a whole portal around them. It'll send them to the nether. And once you break the portals on either side, they'll be crying out, wondering how they even got here. Does your friend live near a village? Play a fun little trick by putting name tags on all the villagers. Name them with taunts and jokes about your friend, and watch them wonder why all the villagers are so mean. Wanna trick your friend who just got a brand new set of netherite tools? Enchanted stone tools look a lot like the netherite set, so why not get some efficiency one stone equipment and swap them over? They won't need the netherite ones, right? These walls are too thick. Better use a TNT cannon! Make an obsidian rectangle that's seven blocks long, with an open end toward the wall. Add a block up on the left side here. Put a water block at the back and a slab at the front. Set TNT on the slab and up to but not including the water block. Then put two levers with redstone. One is for the TNT on the ground, the other for the slab TNT. Activate the first and watch them flow. Then before they explode, activate the other. It launches forward and smashes the base. Reload with TNT and do it again until you breach the walls. You can ignite TNT from miles away with this glitch. If you attach a fishing rod to something and walk into the nether, the game will glitch and your 
fishing rod will have infinite range. Use it to set off TNT next to the enemy base from as far away as you can, and they'll never know it was you. If you run over and pretend to help, you can get into the base and take what you like. This base is covered in lava. Clear it with sand and scaffolding. Make a square of sand with a blocked square of sand in the corner. Each block will sink down and delete the lava in that space. Fill up to the surface so you can walk on it, then delete the top block of that one extra sand in the corner. Replace it with scaffolding and right-click on it to fill the rest of the lava. The scaffolding doesn't burn and deletes the lava. Dig the sand block down and repeat the process until the base is revealed. If the base is in the air and you don't have a elytra, make a man cannon instead. Put some obsidian around a ton of TNT in minecarts. If you have blast protection, a shield and stand on a higher level than the TNT, you can survive and still get launched way into the air. Hit yourself with punch arrows and you can get real distance onto that floating building. This quick hack lets you harvest an entire field in an instant. Plants need a certain light level. So if you have a redstone lantern to provide that, then switch it off when it's time to harvest, or the veg will burst out at once, ready to be picked up or collected in hoppers under the soil. This hack is a fresh twist on a classic. Paintings can be used to hide entrances, but that can be too obvious. Instead, hide a pressure plate behind it that activates when you drop an item through the painting, activating whatever secret mechanism you want to set up. Sometimes smart hacks use the weirdest items, like this stairway of dripstone and smaller and smaller cake slices. Use a horse which can travel over a single block height without jumping, and the weird hitboxes of the items will send you rocketing up the stairway at high speeds. Tired of creatures jumping fences? Try this hack where you set down a bunch of trap doors and flip them up. They'll act as fences that the AI just can't understand and won't be able to escape from. Here's Johnny, the murderous vindicator, and here he is in this weird hack, killing these animals for our food. See, when you tag a vindicator with the name Johnny, he will kill anything in sight. And if you trap him in a mob farm, the animals he kills drop their loot into the chest without you having to lift a finger. Most servers stop you from using commands for obvious reasons, but if the server owner forgot to disable them, it's free game, baby. The slash teleport all entities command has to be the best. Teleporting all mobs loaded into the server to any player you want. It lags their game. And if they've got their volume on, you just unlocked a deaf friend. You can also use slash give to get any block or item you want in the entire game, including command blocks and debug sticks. And of course, try putting yourself in creative mode. Fly around wherever you want and give items to everyone on the server. Come on, guys, spread the love. Now, if you want to take griefing seriously, TNT is your best friend. Not only does TNT destroy buildings, it destroys all items too. Meaning with enough TNT, you can destroy anything. But if you take it to the next level, TNT minecarts are amazing. Not only do they not have a fuse, allowing you to instantly explode them, but if you stack a ton of them, then push them, congratulations! You just made a Minecraft nuke. Bonus points if you push it into a village or someone's farm. Or into a dog. Yeah, do that. Trading between players is one of the most useful things to do on an SMP. It allows everyone to get the items they need to build their dream base, or to max out their gear. But one of the worst things you can do is scam someone in a trade, making it one of the best ways to get banned. You can do this in a few ways, asking them to pay you up front, saying you can duplicate their items, or just straight up ambushing them the second you make the trade. If you want a way to get banned almost instantly though, kill the owner over and over. Most servers don't like you spawn camping anyone, as it's just annoying and nobody gains anything. But when you do it to the owner, they'll be even more annoyed and either use cheats to escape or just straight up ban you. Seriously, what are we teaching kids here? Try this spooky trick with your good friend Johnny. Name tag a vindicator with that name and they go nuts, killing everything they see. Turn them invisible and set them loose in the neighborhood. First your friends will see animals dying, then suddenly they'll start getting hit as Johnny turns on them. Hide behind a tree and play a goat horn to add scary sound effects. If your friend is showing off their riches with shiny gold blocks, play this funny trick by replacing them with yellow concrete blocks. See how long it takes for them to notice. Use an anvil to change their name, and you can replace the blocks they hide in their chest too. Is your friend one of those people that has a bunch of those drop shoots in their base to get around? A super simple way to mess with them is to simply change the water to a lapis block or blue stained glass. But a lot of people have grown wise to this and will check first. That's why you can add this setup of chests and water at the bottom so you can jump down and be totally fine. But when your friend follows you, he'll have a slightly less safe landing. Another similar trap is to place a drip leaf above a huge pit. When you fall onto it, you'll be totally fine. But it'll flip down when your friend falls and send them into the deep dark pit below. Did you know that observers can tell when you hop in a bed? This gives me an idea. Using a simple circuit with a dispenser, you can create a machine that'll stop them from ever sleeping. There's always one guy that's super protective about their builds and won't let you anywhere near them. And obviously, you can't just blow their base up. Or can you? <laughs> <laughs>
Well, that didn't work. So instead, if you've got any copper in their build, try using an axe on it to change the color and then waxing it with honeycomb. Or if they have logs, simply strip them with an axe to change the color. Such a simple troll that will easily ruin any friendships you may have left. Your friend keeps cutting down your favorite tree? Get revenge with this new trick. Hide anvils in the trunk among the leaves. If someone cuts through enough of the tree, the anvil will fall right on top of them. This silky little trick is great if your friend has a fear of spiders. Fill their house with cobwebs, making them slowly trudge through their own home. Then put a single spider in their bedroom to attack. When they complain, just blame the spider. Lava doesn't burn scaffolding, so try this trick on a friend trying to break your stuff. Put scaffolding in your house that looks like you use it as a ladder. At the top, put some lava and hide it from view. If your friend wants to be mean and break your scaffold, they'll be greeted with a face full of lava. This next evil trick is quick and easy. Wait at the top of a bubble stream shaft. Shoot a bunch of arrows of harming into the top. And when your friend gets to the top, they'll get hit and maybe even die. This naughty little trick is also really simple. If your friend boasts about their log cabin, go around their house, stripping a block here and there at random. It will look dreadful. A secret base can be hidden underwater, and it can be very hard to see. The easiest way to find it is to get in a boat and do this weird vision trick. When in the boat on the water, if you go into third person view, you can angle the camera to just about touch the water surface. The vision will glitch and show you everything under the water without that underwater filter, making any odd structure or entity easy to find. Watch out for pitfall traps. If the floor disappears under you and the trap is revealed, do this crazy Crazy flying glitch. Do it. Have the game in windowed mode. And when the floor falls away, right click on the window bar at the top. You'll freeze in the air. You'll need a fellow home invader with you to put a block under you. So when you click on the game to unfreeze, you'll land safe and sound. Trap avoided. If the floor of your friend's base is only slab, then dig a tunnel under the ground of the building. Put a single water source block to have a little water flow through. If you ride a boat in that one block space, the water will bob you up through the floor and even let you interact with objects inside, like the button to open the door. Boats are amazing amazing and can be used to break into buildings in a lot of ways. Put one on the roof and you can phase through by jumping in and out of the boat with perfect timing. Your friend might put an elder guardian near their base, giving you mining fatigue, making it way harder to break blocks to get in. That's why you should always bring buckets of milk. But if you don't have that, set up a bed spawn nearby and kill yourself! Mining fatigue is a five minute cooldown, so you'll have plenty of time to break in and loot the place before it can hit you with it again. Mojang love putting subtle details into their game, and the fisherman actually has a reference to Minecraft history. The texture on the fisherman has a fish on it, but it's not just any fish. It's the texture for raw fish that was removed from the game years ago. People use torches and levers all over the place, but I bet you never notice that they're actually the same thing. They use the same texture and are the same shape. It's just a tip that's colored differently. I definitely can't unsee that. Here's something you probably have missed your entire time playing. Sea lanterns are actually animated. If you look closely, the center of the lantern actually swells with light, spreading outwards. It's so subtle that some colorblind people can't see it at all. Did you know that lily pads in this game will lock in a direction to face? You can't choose where it's facing. It's actually disabled by the coordinates you place them. It would be so useful if you could choose, but life just isn't so easy. The flowers are hiding a secret. They actually grow in a specific pattern. That's because they're generated using Perlin noise, which is the same noise used in 3D to generate the whole Minecraft world. This detail is so subtle, you'll think you're going crazy when you notice it. It turns out that Prismarine has an animated texture, but you might not notice it at all. That's because it's an incredible subtle change in color that takes a full minute to animate fully. Everyone knows how to deflect a gas fireball with a sword, but you can deflect with almost anything. Arrows, fishing lines, even snowballs can knock the fireball away. In fact, nearly all projectiles can deflect the fireball, except for the ender pearl. And I mean, you shouldn't be throwing those around carelessly anyway. What? One mistake the Mojang developer Surge made actually stayed in the game for three years, and no one noticed. According to Surge, he messed of parts of the world generation so that the direction right was actually forward and back was actually left. The funny part of this is that nobody noticed, despite how infuriating this mistake may be. Fireworks and elytras have become paired with each other. You will never use an elytra without having its trusty sidekick nearby. However, this was not always the case. When the elytra was first added to the game, firework rockets did nothing. The elytra was meant to be more of a glider than wings, and so Mojang decided to not implement a way for them to fly. Until players discovered all they had to do was shoot themselves with a punch two bow, then they would be able to fly to their heart's content. Signs are one of the most useful items in Minecraft, perfect for organizing your items once and then completely disregarding them. However, did you know that you can see sign text for a candle in the bedrock edition? This glitch desperately needs to be patched by Mojang, but hey, you should listen to the sign. There are very few blocks in Minecraft that will speed up minecarts, and even to this day, people are infuriated by how slow they can be. But if you mix a boat and a minecart and then add a villager into the mix, you can actually make minecarts go faster. And the best part is, you do not need to mine 
mine for hours to get all the gold and redstone. Now I can make my massive gold statue. Everyone knows how to break bedrock with TNT. But did you know that there is an even easier way to break bedrock that doesn't require you to spend hundreds of hours building elaborate machines? Just get yourself a drip leaf and bone meal it. That will destroy anything in its path. One of my favorite items in the game is the goat horn. However, in Snapshot 22W17A, if you went into your creative inventory on the snapshot, it seems that Mojang wanted the goat horn to be the do it all block. Do, do, do! Come, my goat army! One cool trick you can do with gas fireballs is sending the fireball where your friends don't expect it. That's because the fireball goes in the direction you look when it gets hit. That means you can throw a snowball, turn your head toward your friend, and when the fireball gets hit, it'll blaze toward them with murderous intent. This little detail doesn't get noticed a lot because you only see it from far away. Everyone notices how the world generates around them, but actually, entities like chests and shulker boxes have their own range, at which point they disappear. You can even use this fact to hide stuff high in the sky. Further than people on the ground can see. The Riptide Trident can let you fly through the air. But there's an issue. It works when you're wet, but if you're submerged in the water, you actually don't fly as high when you launch. This is because the water that you're in slows you down like crazy. Really, you should be standing in a puddle. And it works way better. Now, I definitely can't see this. When you connect two blocks of this glazed terracotta together, you end up with the face of a penguin. They're peeking up over the edge of the block. Put them in your guest bedroom so they can watch your friends sleep. This villager is unemployed, and he just hates it. Now you can tell. Put a word station 32 blocks away in a super complex maze. The villager will make his way to it without fail. Look at him go. Personally, I think dogs in Minecraft need more customization. Yes, I know they are adding the wolf farmer in the next update, but I want to dream bigger. In the bedrock edition of Minecraft, there was a hilarious glitch that would actually let you die the entire dog. Ugh, why did they need to have more dogs? Oh no, I'm going to die in this lava. Well, actually, no. As I have an expert way to get out of this certain death situation, if you are burning in lava, quit the game and then relog. When you log back in, you will actually have three seconds of complete invincibility. But be warned, it won't get rid of the burning, so you may still burn through a crisp once you get out. Villages are a staple part of Minecraft, needed for everything from exploiting the trade market to summoning their iron protectors just for them to burn in your iron farm. However, when villages were first added, they were only meant to spawn in the plains biome. But one mistake within Minecraft's code had them spawning in the ocean and having really nice wooden paths. Mojang realized the mistake and panicked, thinking of how to deal with it. So they decided to make it a feature instead. Yeah, it's now a feature, not a mistake. There is a secret item in Minecraft that Mojang really does not want you to know about. Certain blocks in Minecraft are unattainable without the use of commands. The command blocks, barriers, and this elusive item, the debug stick. This was actually introduced as Mojang kept adding blocks to the game that were becoming buggier and buggier. Hitting a block with this stick will actually change the state of a block. And the funniest part, this mistake is meant to fix other mistakes. No, this guy's gonna steal my diamonds. Quick, quick. Wait, what's in this chest? Oh, it's scaffolding. I can use this. I just have to play scaffolding like this, and then spam clicking, and then I can get away. Yes! This mistake is something that Minecraft seriously needs to remove as it can be very overpowered in these manhunt situations, but it is very fun to do. 